السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته طلاب المرحلة الخامسة We will continue our lecture in rheumatology Our subject today is Dermatomyositis or Polymyositis As the name apply It is an inflammation of skin, dermato and muscles myo So an inflammation and the skin and muscles Dermatomyositis or it's an inflammation of the muscle only without the skin involvement. It is polymyositis. Dermatomyositis is an inflammatory disorder causing symmetrical proximal muscle weakness, but not exclusively affecting the skeletal muscle. The disease can also affect the cardiac or smooth muscle. So other internal organ can be uh, involved. Usually in associated with characteristic skin lesion, as we will see later on. While in patients with polymyositis, it is part of the spectrum of dermatomyositis in which there will be no skin manifestation. So it's the same disease without the skin manifestation, we call it polymyositis. Both of them are rare with about 2 per 10 million their years usually occur in middle age patient and there is light female predominance with female to male ratio about 2 to 1. The disease can occur as isolated, idiopathic or may occur in associate with other autoimmune disease as we see later. And what is important, there is a significant association between dermatomyositis and polymyositis with underlying malignancies. And even more, dermatomyositis and polymyositis may be the earliest manifestation of underlying malignancy. So in any patient with this disorder, a screening for underlying malignancy should be done to exclude the possibility of cancer. How patients with dermatomyositis present, we will divide the disease into two spectrums, skin manifestation and muscle manifestation. So muscle Usually patient to present it with symmetrical proximal muscle weakness that develop over weeks, more commonly involving the lower limb than the upper limb, and patient complaining of difficulty in rising from the chair, combing his hair, climbing his stair and lifting. Usually a lot of them complaining of pain in this muscle, but weakness without pain does not exclude dermatomyositis. So majority has pain, but some patients are painless muscle weakness. If the disease involves muscle other than skeletal muscle, most commonly involve the pharyngeal muscle, will result in dysphagia and frequent aspiration with pneumonia. If involved respiratory muscle, the patient may be presented with respiratory failure and a need for respiratory support. These about muscle involvement while skin involvement in patients with dermatomyositis are common and there is a lot of manifestation and let's start take it one by one. First gotrone papule. Papule. These are gotrone papules which is a scaly as you see obviously there is scaling. Erythematous or violaceous a plaque occurring over extensor surface of the proximal, distal, and metacarbophalangeal joints. This is another picture of gotron papules. The same lesion, which we say previously it occurs over the extensor surface, if occur on the elbow or other extensor surface and it's flat. Not papular lesion, we call it gotrone sign, not papule. So we have gotrone papules when there is papular lesion. We got gotrone sign when the lesion is flat. Next, heliotrope rash or eruption. It is a violaceous discoloration of the eyelids. As we see, it is violaceous red or pinkish in color associated with edema of periorbital structure and eyelid. 
This is another example of heliotro brush, which involving the upper lid, it's violaceous, pinkish in color. The skin involvement occur in structure surrounding the eye. What is important is to note that the bridge of the nose involved and the cheek are involved. So how we differentiate it from malar rush of SLE? Simple. This is a patient with malar rush of SLE. We see there is pairing of nasolabial fold. While in patient with heliotrope brush, no skin is pairing whatsoever. So if the involvement is generalized, including nasolabial fold, it is heliotrope brush. While otherwise, it is acute manifestation of SLA or Miller brush. Other skin manifestation can act in, in the upper back or chest or shoulder called an shawl distribution can also occur. While in the category of systemic manifestation of disease, interstitial lung disease are common and usually occur in 30% of patients and usually associated with the presence of specific antibody. We talk about it later. How we investigate patients suspected to have dermatomyositis or polymyositis? Start with simple investigation looking for a marker that increases in muscle injury, more specifically serum creatine kinase, which is typically rise and is useful measure even for disease activity, not for the diagnosis, so we can follow up the patient by frequent creatine kinase upon treatment. But you should keep in your mind normal creatine kinase does not exclude the diagnosis because about 5 to 10 percent of patients usually have normal creatine kinase. Next, more sophisticated investigation, autoantibody. First, anti-nuclear antibody is positive in about 60% of patients, so it is a sensitive marker for disease. But you know it is not specific because it occurs in many diseases, like in SLE, systemic sclerosis, etc. More specific antibody are anti-MI2, which is specific for dermatomyositis, while anti-GO1, is more specific for polymyositis and when this antibody is positive in the blood the patient has high likelihood for developing interstitial lung disease so it is also a marker for future development of interstitial lung disease elucutromyography should be done for this patient and it will show myopathic changes. To confirm the diagnosis, we need muscle biopsy. But normal muscle biopsy does not exclude the diagnosis because sometimes muscle involvement is batchy. So we need to take sample from different sites. As we say previously, the disease sometimes occurs and associated with underlying malignancy. So screening for underlying malignancy should be taken routinely in form of full examination, chest x-ray, serum, urine, and protein electrophoresis, CT scan of the chest, abdomen, and pelvis, prostatic specific antigen should be included in men, and mammography should be included in women. So. A lot of investigation should be done to exclude underlying malignancies. How we manage patients with dermatomyositis or polymyositis? The main stay in treatment is oral steroid. Usually patients need high dose steroid in form of prednisolone 1 mg per kg per day. But if patient is presented with acute worsening where the disease involving swallowing or respiratory muscle, IV steroid should be initiated in form of high dose intravenous methylprednisolone for three days and then we convert it into oral prednisolone. In addition, if patient show poor response or the disease is so severe, intravenous immunoglobulin can be tried. Although most patients respond well to steroid, but 
you know steroid has many side effects so we need to decrease the dose of steroid by adding other immune suppressing agent as steroid sparing therapy and many drugs can be used like methotrexate, mycophenolate movetil, azocyprine and cyclosporine for skin involvement antimalarial, antimalarial agent hydroxychloroquine can be used but there is no cure for this disease is chronic progressive disease till now there is no specific therapy before we finish our lecture we need to talk a few points about a syndrome called mixed connective tissue disease mixed connective meaning is a combination of more than one connective tissue disease it is a condition in which there is some clinical feature of systemic sclerosis plus myositis plus SLE all occur in the same patient but not necessarily full picture of these symptoms could be small number of feature from each disease simultaneously these patients usually have positive antiribonucleoprotein antibody or anti-RMP and some resources say it is 100% positive in these patients so we must find the anti-RMP antibody and our management should be focused on which of the three disease is most heavily affected this patient sure this patient have mixed connective tissue disease but the main symptom or the heaviest disease involvement is systemic sclerosis so we need to treat it as systemic sclerosis while patient presented mainly with myositis and proximal muscle weakness we need to treat it as myositis polymyositis dermatomyositis etc thank you very much